Hello, and welcome to another video. Uh, this one comes from a question on stream, which is, uh, I've noticed some people prefer curly brace, curly brace, or dict pren pren. Uh, what's the difference, and why should I care? Um, and it turns out there's kind of two main differences, and uh, one of them is a performance concern. Now, granted, it isn't much of a performance concern because they're both they're both pretty fast, or, or hopefully not a bottleneck in your program. Of course, if you're looking for bottlenecks in your program, you should probably profile them before, you know, just randomly changing things. Um, but you, you might also find that a stylistic choice could potentially have a performance impact. So uh, it's something to look out for. Uh, but anyway, let me show you the difference between the two and uh, why this kind of matters, uh, as well as, you know, what, what I advise there. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into Python. And I'm not going to be actually doing any profiling this. I'll let you, um, I'll leave profiling this as an exercise to the user. Um, but I'm going to show you some evidence and some intuition about how you can think about why one is faster than the other. Um, and so let's make two functions. One of them is f. And we're just going to return a empty dictionary list literal here. Actually, we could even do, you know, a to one in here. We'll, we'll make it slightly interesting. And we'll have another function, which does the same thing. Return a equals one but by calling dict instead. And I'm going to use the disassembler. I did a video on the disassembler before. I will link that one in the description. The disassembler is going to show us kind of how the bytecode of both of these functions compare. And hopefully, by just looking at the bytecode of these functions, we should be able to kind of guess at which one's going to be faster and which one's going to be slower. Uh, so let's first disassemble f, and we'll also disassemble g. And... Um, if we look at this, um, we got here. Uh, okay, so essentially what's happening with uh, the first function is we load two constants and put them onto the stack. So we load a and we load one. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's a set of key values there. And then we call this opcode build map. And so this will take, you know, one key value pair. So this a1 and build that into a dictionary and return it. Now, the one thing about CPython bytecode is, uh, you know, anything that's done in the bytecode tends to be much, much faster than things that are done by calling functions or accessing attributes or, uh, you know, dereferencing operators or all those other things are going to be much, much slower than anything that can be implemented directly in the opcode loop. Um, and so the fact that build map happens here directly as an opcode uh, means that it's probably going to be faster than this call function uh, opcode that we see down here. Now, if we do this down here, you'll also notice that we're doing a load global. So we need to pull. We need to first pull in a name, uh, and then we need to put things onto the stack. This load const is almost the same as this, uh, although, huh, weird. We actually load this as a tuple instead of a string directly. I actually don't know how call function kw works, but my guess is what it does is. Uh, you know, takes this tuple or takes a series of tuples and then a series of numbers. I guess we could make it bigger and see what happens. H turn dict a equals one, b equals two, this dot dis h. Ah, okay, yeah. So we have two keyword arguments. These are the names, these are the values, and I guess it zips them together and then. Um, oh, actually, this was the change in Python 3.6 to make uh, named arguments ordered. I remember now. Okay, cool. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's what's happening here. But this call function, and this this is kind of the, the, the place where I would have intuition about things being much slower. Calling a function is one of the more expensive things that happens at the bytecode level um, because Python needs to allocate an entire new stack frame. Um, and stack frames in Python are stored on the heap. So like uh, you're, you're building a bunch of heap objects, you're Having having local variables, your stack, and all that all that other stuff there. You're calling that function. You're doing error checking on whether on whether it returned the right value. Uh, you know all all sorts of stuff there. Checking for exceptions, etc. Uh, and so calling a function is going to be much more expensive than just calling build map directly. Uh, now, if you wanted to look into this, you could actually look in the event loop for CPython, and you'll notice that build map is going to call uh, pydict methods uh, at the C level directly. So it doesn't actually do any of the you know Python level function calling like we're seeing here. Um, so it'll be much faster. So that's one thing that I want you to take out of this. The other is because we're loading globals here, we can actually change how this function works. 
So I could reassign dictionary to something completely different if I wanted to. Uh, let's say a oh, list is going to break. Um, let's make our own function. Dev dict star star quarks um, print quarks and then oops. Oh, dang it. You can't fix a typo. It's too late. <laughs> star star quarks print quarks and then I don't know. Return five. <laughs> so we, we can completely break how dictionary works because it's doing a global lookup for this. And so this name could be reassigned or monkey patched or all sorts of stuff. So now you can see if we run G, um, it printed A1 because those are the keyword arguments that we passed. And then we get back five instead of a dictionary like we originally had. Um, and so that could be an undesirable effect. My advice is to pick one and stick with it. I tend to stick to dictionary literals um, be because I don't know, they, they look better to me. This one kind of looks too close to like an object instantiation, and so you know I, I like to I like to remind myself that dictionaries are squishy and that I should av avoid them when possible, um, because you know it's it's too easy to have unstructured it's too easy to have bugs from unstructured data, so that's that's why I don't really like dictionaries. But anyway, uh, pick one, stick to it. Uh, ideally, set up a code formatter or a linter that's going to solve this for you, so you don't even have to think about this as a problem. Um, Anyway, that's the difference between the two. Hopefully this was useful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.